In all of my years of coaching, I've had the opportunity and the privilege of speaking with the most lovely, empathetic, compassionate people that you could ever come across. And it saddens me to know this because many of them and many of you are in and out of abusive relationships with narcissistically abusive personalities in this world. And so I'm here to talk about this extraordinary gift of empathy and how to understand your empathy and how to use it and how to not use it so that you can stay out of abusive relationship dynamics. And that's why in this message, we're going to talk about number one, what empathy is. We're going to talk about what empathy is for, because it's important that you understand what this extraordinary gift of empathy is for in this life. And then finally, we're going to talk about how to avoid narcissistic abuse as an empath. Another way to look at that is how not to use your empathy or the misuse of empathy, which will land you in narcissistic abuse every time. Now, it's important to understand this, but before we get into it, I want to let you know that I'm here to support you. Down in the description box right below this video, you'll find access for one-on-one -on -one appointments. Click on the link in the description box. You can choose a video call or a standard telephone call. In addition to that, I also have a coaching program, and my coaching program is live and in person each and every day. So if you're looking for this type of accountability in a group setting, then consider joining the Royal Week Coaching Program. Next week, by the way, we will be doing our once-a-month fast. It's a three-day water fast. So if you're looking to reset your body, your mind, and your spirit uh, by going through a little bit of a starvation period, it helps, right? As long as you're medically able to do it. Head on down there. Do it along with the Royal Week Coaching Program. Now, let's get into this. First and foremost, understand that if you are an empathetic person, a person with this extraordinary gift of empathy, understand that you are not like everybody else. Everybody else is not like you. We are not all the same, period. And one of the biggest mistakes and the things you have to throw out the window right now is that we are all the same. I don't care what your church has told you and your pastor has told you that deep in the heart of everybody, there is some empathetic gold nugget. It's not true. If you are gifted with empathy, it's a gift. And true empathy in this life is an extraordinary gift, not shared in the world. But as the Bible says, to each has been given a measure of faith. Well, I believe to each has been given a measure of empathy, right? Or not. Keep in mind that we do live in a world that is dichotomous. We are not all the same. It's easy to think that we're all the same, and it's easy to get into this place where you're trying to figure out why other people aren't treating you the way you're treating them, and vice versa. Listen, we share a world with evil. As a matter of fact, all these labels, narcissist, psychopath, sociopath, all it is is the medical industries and the, and the, the psychiatry industry, the scientific community. It's all of their, their effort to try to understand the difference between good and evil. That's, it. That's all it is. What, what makes Cain a murderer and what makes Abel just want to serve and do the right thing? Don't let any of them fool you to get you to believe that, well, we're all Cain. No, we're not. Many of you right now are shaking your head saying, that's true. I'm no Cain. I couldn't imagine killing somebody, but you share a world with people who can. We're all very different. Okay, so first and foremost, understand this. This is going to help you to understand and accept your gift of empathy, and your position in this life. That's what this is all about. First and foremost, except you have a gift. Your mom may not have it. Your dad may not have it. By the way, they didn't even make you. You were conceived through them, but they didn't make you. A lot of people believe, well, my mom and dad made me, right? <laughs> now listen, a night of drunken sex doesn't make another human being, right? If you ever got broken, they couldn't fix you. Because they did not make you. They do not know how your inner wiring is even... They wouldn't even know where to start. Parents don't make children. Okay, But I'm not going to go on that rant. Because some of you might want to turn off right now and say, Oh, this is some you know, faith-based religious... No, I'm just being... It's just the truth. Right? This also is going to indicate to you why you could be different from your mom and dad. How many of you have nothing in common with your own parents or your brothers or your sisters. Listen, that's not new. Once again, go back to the ancient literature of the Bible. Cain and Abel, two brothers, one was a murderer. How do you make sense of that? 
if we're supposed to be like our family. All right, anyways, I'm done with that rant. Accept your extraordinary gift of empathy. It is yours. It's been given to you. Why? Let's get into this. What is the gift of empathy first and foremost? And it is a gift, right? So empathy is the ability to emotionally understand what other people feel. Emotionally is the key here. Emotionally understand what other people feel. It doesn't mean you're going to experience what they feel, but you're going to emotionally try to connect and understand it. This is why even with abusive narcissistic people, you cannot experience or share in their wrath or their rage or their anger or their outbursts, but you sure can try to emotionally understand them, which is oftentimes why you stay. Because you're emotionally trying to connect. You're emotionally understanding, hey, they're hurting, they're broken. Even though you cannot rationalize their experience of their violence, right? So the key in understanding empathy, and this is also a wall, it's a limitation of it, is it's an ability to only emotionally understand and try to connect with what other people feel, okay? But that's the limitation of that. Number two, it's... To see things from their point of view. Yes, empathy is an extraordinary gift that allows you to see another person's point of view. I'm going to share a little bit more about this in the next section we're going to talk about, which is how to use your empathy. And once again, even though you can see things from another person's point of view, it does not mean you share in their experience or mindset about it. So again, you're up against that limit narcissistically abusive people in this world lash out violence, rage, throw things, anger, outbursts, right? You may be able to see things from their point of view, but you cannot experience or share within that type of aggression. So there's that limitation, okay? Number three, you can imagine yourself in other people's place. You're able to observe and look at people who are broken, who are hurting, and you can imagine, what if that was me? How would I feel? Okay. Once again, though, you're up against the limitation. You don't have their mind or their motivations in life, but you can emotionally try to imagine yourself on an emotional level. Okay. Last but not least, feeling what other people are feeling. This can be a blessing or a curse. It's a blessing if you know how to control it and use it. The curse in this is that you can walk into any room, you can experience the feeling in the atmosphere of other people who are just feeling bad or angry. This is the area that oftentimes will get you in trouble. A lot of times, narcissistically abusive people will think that you're too sensitive. They will call you judgmental. They will accuse you of thinking you're better than everybody else. Why? Because you're feeling what they are feeling. And oftentimes, it will cause caution. You'll want to stand back. You'll be like, whoa, like I sense some darkness over there. It's kind of freaking me out. It's scaring me a little bit. And so you distance yourself. And this is where abusive people are like, what are you backing up from me for, huh? Oh, you think you're better than me. Right? So that's part of the curse of feeling what other people are feeling. Again, it's important to understand that this gift is limited to the emotions. It doesn't mean you're thinking what they're thinking. But emotionally, you can be feeling what they're feeling. Keep this in mind. The gift of empathy has to do with feelings. It's emotional. It's an emotional gift, okay? Intuitive. It's an intuitive emotional gift. So it does not mean you share in people's thoughts. doesn't mean you share in their motivation. doesn't mean you share in their actions. So you cannot relate with how abusive people react. But you're trying to connect your empathy as a feeling. You're trying to feel what they're feeling, all right? So let's move right along to the next the next place with the gift of empathy, which is then how do you use it? How do you use your gift of empathy so that in this world full of narcissistically abusive people, by the way, how do you use it? How can you use it while protecting yourself from abuse? Well, we're going to get to how to protect yourself from abuse a little bit deeper in the next one. However, here's the gift of Uh, of empathy and how it should be used in this world. Keep in mind, your gift of empathy is for this world. It's for the people of this world. 
It's for your community. There, This is a broken world that we live in. There are hurting, angry people out there who require and need the gift of empathy through you, right? Because it just might help them in a time of need. So number one is to console the hurting. Another way to say this is to console the broken. You can even console the angry. You can console these, right? If you want to know on a deeper level what this actually looks like, you can look at the New Testament of the Bible where Jesus says, I tell you to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. This is consoling consoling the hurting. This is using the extraordinary gift of empathy. Now, watch this, okay? Love your enemies does not mean to love your enemies, if you know what I mean, right? We've got to first go back and rewind the clock to understand the word love that Jesus was using in that context in comparison to what you and I have been told love is today. Doesn't mean you got to be hugging up on them. Doesn't mean you got to be, no, 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 no. That's not what Jesus was referring to when he said to love your enemies. He said, basically, console the hurting. You can console the angry. I'm going to give you another example of this in just a moment here of what this looks like. When you understand how your gift of empathy is to be used to console the hurting, you can even understand how you can use it to console narcissistically abusive people, how you can display love for them, not the love that you're thinking, right? Not the crazy, twisted, disgusting, perverted love of, of that, that, you know, of, of this modern culture but a different type of love that you and I long forgot, agape, whatever it is, which is just doing the right thing at the right time. I'm going to give you an example of that because the next one here is being diplomatic. The gift of empathy is to be used in this world to be diplomatic, not democratic. Right? That democratic, that, that's something completely different. Diplomatic. How many of you know what the word diplomatic means? The word diplomatic means being able to see all sides, right? So as an empath, you can see and you can connect your feelings to all different types of views. Once again, it doesn't mean you share in the mindset, but it just means you can see it. You can feel it. You can connect emotionally to it. Being diplomatic has its place. As I was saying earlier, consoling the hurting, consoling the broken and the the angry. I'm going to share with you a story that I always... I remember it. To me, it was it, it was an incredible moment. Uh, a buddy of mine and myself were putting on a a show, a, a Christian concert back in California, and it, like with any concerts, no matter who's playing, Christian band or not, you're going to have some knuckleheads showing up. Right? We talk about narcissistic people, right? The bullies. Let's just say this. The bullies showed up to the concert. It was a punk rock show, and the bullies that showed up who probably shouldn't have even been there, but they decided to get a little violent and hostile and aggressive because that's what bullies and narcissists in the world like to do. They like to take their shirt off and start charging people like they're bulls or whatever and knocking everybody over. And so this knucklehead was there and starting a fight with people in the middle of this concert, this Christian concert. We had security there. Security came, grabbed the guy, by his arms, yanked him out, literally threw him out the front door. And he was so upset. And that guy was out there. And he was kicking the wall and yelling and threatening to throw things through the glass door and this and that. And I'll never forget there was this man there who was a pastor, a youth pastor at that. And he actually went out and he consoled that young, violent, hostile, aggressive, narcissistic bully. He loved the enemy, right? Now, he didn't love the enemy, right? No, he loved, he consoled the hurting. He was able to see the side. What side was he able to see? I don't know. I didn't hear the conversation, though I watched and I observed as he went side by side. And he went for a long walk up the sidewalk away from the concert with this guy that, that was seething and his anger and hostility and violence and And they walked all the way back down. And by the time they got down, that young man who was so full of violence and wanting to fight everybody was calm. Being diplomatic. So that pastor was able to, for a moment, just see that person's side and help whatever words were spoken. 
This is the gift of empathy. When you can empathize and you understand your gifting, you will be able to use it in a powerful way to even con- console the angry or even your enemies. Listen, I, I've consoled my enemies using the gift of empathy. And I didn't, in the moment, I just thought I was diffusing the situation because it was getting pretty rowdy. But as I look at it now, I was consoling the hurting, okay? The next one down is organized planned giving. Organized planned giving. Empaths, you empaths are amazing organizers of events, of parties, of get-togethers, of being able to feed people, uh, inviting people in. You you are a, a comfort organizer. You And many of you probably don't know it because you've been involved in toxic family dynamics or you're in abusive relationships that will not let you exercise your ability to organize events, to organize parties. But You have an extraordinary gift of being able to know what people will need, whether it comes to the food, how to feed people, how to make people feel comfortable, how to make people feel welcomed. The gift of empathy can put all of that together. You are the best party planners there are, right? We're talking about homecoming parties, uh, open house parties, church parties, event, wherever you want people to feel welcomed and comfortable, you do this effortlessly. Effortlessly, You just know what people are going to need and you provide it. So that's an excellent use of the gift of empathy. The next one, the last one down is you foresee problems. The gift of empathy also is kind of like a superpower. You can foresee this person is going to Maybe create a problem. So let's put some extra security there. That's going to be a problem. This area. Anywhere you go, you can foresee a problem. How many of you do that? You can drive. Maybe you're going to a late night event. Be in a parking lot. And there's a parking spot open in some dark corner over there, right? And you're like, I foresee that being a problem. Right? You just have this sense about you, don't you? This is the gift of empathy. You can call it discernment as well. Discernment is also linked into this. It's an extraordinary gift to be able to foresee problems. The gift of empathy is extraordinary. And if you allow yourself to accept your gift of empathy, you will not rely on chance. You won't wait to become reactive when problems arise. You will allow yourself to foresee problems so you avoid it. You will organize planned giving, which is what it's for. You'll be living out your purpose of feeding the homeless, giving to the needy, being diplomatic where it's needed to console the hurting and the broken and to even soothe the angry. Yes, you can do all of that with your extraordinary gift. But let's get into the misuse of this extraordinary gift, because even though it's an extraordinary gift that can be used in a lot of ways, there is a misuse of this, which is what causes many of you to get in contact with me. That's right. I am here coaching people out of narcissistic abuse because I would say more than 90% of you that I talk with are highly empathic, intuitive, compassionate, lovely, beautiful people who are misusing your gift of empathy. Let's talk about what this looks like. The gift of empathy is not a doorway to romantic intimacy. I'm going to repeat this, and I want you to repeat this with me. Say it with me. The gift of empathy is not a doorway to romantic intimacy. That is a complete misuse of this extraordinary gift. It's a misuse of it. I would say it's it's like this. If you're going to go and you're going to feed the homeless, great. Don't sleep with them, right? If you think about that, it's like, yeah, I I wouldn't probably do that. Okay, well, when you use your empathy as a doorway to a romantic, intimate relationship with somebody who's hurting or broken or down and out, you're doing the same thing. You're taking your gift of empathy, with which, if you're not careful, it can create 
a intimate bond. There is already an intimacy to being empathic. There's an intimate connection. I would liken it to kind of like a, a massage, somebody who gives massages. A massage from a professional masseuse is still an intimate connection, is it not? It's hands-on. It's a relaxing moment with somebody's body in a very vulnerable and compromising situation, right? It can be very vulnerable. It can be intimacy, but it's not to be a doorway to a romantic intimacy. The same is true with empathy. You can talk and you can feel what somebody's feeling and it can be intimate, but you want to caution yourself with making it a doorway to romance. And here's why. Your romantic relationships, your romantic intimacy should be limited to a partner, somebody who is at a status of being a partner. You need a partner as a romantic partner, right? That's what being equally yoked is all about. When you are using your empathy and you're trying to meet somebody who is hurting, lost, broken, angry, you're not equally yoked, are you? Not at all. You're trying to feel and trying to connect, but in no way, shape, or form are you of the same motivation or the same mindset. Again, the limitations of empathy keep you at a place where you cannot rationalize with their thought process. You can feel, but you cannot rationalize their way of thinking. So why get emotionally or why get romantically involved? Not only that, but the requirements of you, once you get romantic with your intimacy, right? The requirements are that you continue to give that, which starts to exhaust you and deplete you, and you never receive back. It would be the same as you know, you're feeding the homeless and the hungry while waiting for them to feed you back, right? It doesn't work, does it? The same is true here. If you're going to start to use your empathy in a romantic, intimate setting, you're going to give and give and give, but you're never going to receive what you need. That's the trap, and this is oftentimes what happens when people get together with narcissistically abusive people in the dating world. I hear it all the time. They were down and out. I wanted to help them. I was compassionate on them. I was using my empathy, misuse of empathy. You took what Jesus said, loving your enemies, and you took it to the... the, the far end of the extreme. You loved your enemies. You know what I'm saying? And as a result, you kept loving and loving and loving, waiting for something good to happen, and it never does. It drains you. It empties you out, right? So do not use your gift of empathy as a doorway to romantic intimacy. Reserve your romantic intimacy for an equal partner. Now, let me know down below if you want me to do a video on the right way to try to find a romantic partner, right? What you should be looking for, what equally yoked is. Write, your, write it down in the comment section, I, and I'll be sure to work on that. Another misuse of empathy is wanting something in return. Wanting something in return. That's also not a gift of empathy. That's not using your gift of empathy correctly. Okay, again, you should have your life situated via a romantic partner or a relationship or a community or a family that already fills your cup so that you can use your gift of empathy to pour it out into the world. Your gift of empathy is for the world. Everybody say this with me. The gift of empathy is for a broken world. But you need to make sure that you have a community or a partner or a marriage that's filling you up so that you can then give your gift of empathy to the world. Hope this makes sense. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions about that. You don't use your gift of empathy to want something in return. It's not like feeding a homeless person saying, okay, now it's your turn to feed me. Hey, I just helped you out of your anger. Now you help me do this. That's a misuse of your empathy. Last but not least, the gift of empathy is not to solve other people's problems. This is one of the limitations you're going to be up against. Remember what I said in the beginning the gift of empathy is emotional based, but in no way, shape, or form does it fix other people's problems. You have to stop believing and you have to be aware 
that your empathy cannot fix or solve another person's problems. I've been a coach now for over six years, and I have talked with thousands of people who are coming out of narcissistic abuse, yet I'm here to tell you right now, I have never once solved a person's problems or fixed their situation. I've exercised empathy and compassion while listening. I've offered my best advice and my best resources, and I continue to do this on a daily basis, but I cannot fix what you're going through. I cannot fix what somebody else is going through. Neither can you. You cannot fix the anger. You cannot fix the trauma. You can be a listening ear. You can be all the things that we've talked about what empathy is. But at the end of the day, each one of us, narcissistically abusive people included, have to fix their own issues in life. They have to fix their own problems. So don't believe that you as an empath can fix another person's problems. Does this make sense to you? Not yes, if you understand this, right? Repeat after me. My empathy cannot fix somebody else's anger issues or problems or violence. It can't fix any of that. Once you realize this, you'll separate yourself from feeling like it's your fault that your empathy is being met with somebody who's not responding well. It's not your fault. You've exercised your gift, your gift of empathy. It's on them to fix their problem. All right? Hope this makes sense. I know this was a long video. Thank you. I know this was a long video. Thank you for spending it here with me. And uh, I want to let you know that I am here to support you. And that's why down in the description box, you'll find access for one-on-one -on -one appointments. Simply find the link that says schedule your one-on-one -on -one appointment. Click that. It will take you down to select either a Zoom or a video call or a telephone call. And I'd love the opportunity to speak with you. Before I leave, I want to invite you to check out one of my other videos. There's two of them right there for you. Pick one, they're that one or uh, that one. They're going to be good videos for you. I'm looking forward to making another video for you. If you found this video helpful and insightful, hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, share this video with somebody who needs to hear it. And I'll be back with more right here on The Royal We.